how do. Uh, there's been a little bit of progress. Firstly, I've sanded off the edges of the tone ring that I made uh, so that the skin will glide smoothly over the top. Pop that back. Uh, what else have I done? I decided to trim a little bit off the middle section. It, it was a little bit proud in places anyway, but the main reason is that I managed to acquire some of this. It's known as Ormelieu, uh, and it was used for decorating furniture and things, so it's clearly a, a pressed copper ribbon, um, but it's got these little flowers and leaves and things. It's rather attractive, and I believe that it's antique, and I think it would look rather good when it's polished up a little bit as a band to go around the middle. It fits perfectly. Perfect. But I hadn't realised that when I did that, it meant that it would expose the paint on the one side of this oak um, that I never thought I would have to deal with. Uh, so that's some progress. And then the other notable thing is um, that I've stuck a fingerboard on it. Can you see that's a bit bright, isn't it? Can you, it's hard to find the right angle for you. So it's a bit of oak. I had another one of these and it was very bendy. So I ripped it down the middle on the bandsaw because I can do that now. As a fingerboard, I ripped it down the middle in order to create a fingerboard, but mainly because it had quite a nice oak grain that kind of matched the sort of grain. It's got a similar sort of thing going on, a classic oak uh, grain. Yeah, but unfortunately, I didn't get a very good glue line um, along here. It's really not great. If you can see that sort of curled up a little bit. Um, and I did bother to get this bit, the neck, fairly flat. Anyway, originally I didn't want to put a fingerboard on this. I was really quite pleased with the laminations that I'd done. Uh, and I was happy to go with that as a fingerboard. And, and I think a lot of mountain banjos do that. I don't think they have a separate fingerboard. I think it's usually just a one slab of whatever it is. Cherry, walnut. Um, possibly oak. Oh, it's a bit heavy. Anyway, I'm waffling on again. So I didn't really want to, but I realised that because I only put a 10 degree black angle on the on the peg head, that by the time I mounted a machine head on the peg head, the string would, that was threaded here would already be on pretty much on the height of the string going along the fretboard fingerboard. So the danger would be that it might jump out of the nut or just not sound very good. You do need, the string needs to be bridged between the nut and the bridge. And you, you do need a back angle. Um, 10 degree is fairly minimum but it should be enough if the peg head were a little bit lower. But my the reason why I only went with 10 degree is because what I want is for this to be able to sit flat on the ground or hung on the wall and it not put pressure on the on the neck here just below the peg head this is a weak spot when it's strung there's already a lot of strain coming this way and if it's resting just on the peg head yeah there's a lot of strain on this point here in fact that's the reason usually that you have a what's known as a volute this little novel here. When you're playing, it's a nice thumb stop, you know, so you know where you are. It's a nice reference. It stops your hand on that first fret there. But it's mostly just to strengthen the neck at its very weakest point. 
and that's the narrowest point widthways of the neck. So that little extra knobble, little knuckle, known as a volute, just gives it a little bit more strength. And mine's going to be so peely with a pinstripe of maple. Yeah, so not too happy with the glue line, but it's going to be narrow yet. So maybe it's not quite so bad further in. And there are other ways around that if it comes to it. You can do things like get some oak sawdust and mix it with a bit of your wood glue and fill it in. And in any event, this is a mountain banjo. Um, so I don't mind if it's a little bit rustic. I don't, I don't mind if there's some imperfections. There's going to be a few imperfections. It's me making it, after all. As long as it plays well. It, you know, it's going to look nice enough. You know. It's going to be quite an attractive thing. Oh, 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 and, and. Look at that then. I had another calf skin that was, oh, God, it must be nearly three times as thick as this. This is almost like, um, if you can see that, it's almost like plastic on the inside. It's so thin. Lovely. And because this is quite a small pot, sort of nine inch pot, if it had something quite thick and heavy, you know, I don't know how responsive that would be over the smaller area. I, I think this might be ideal. Um, and, I mean, it's almost transparent. Yeah, so I did a little bit more work on the fingerboard. I think you can probably see the grain a bit better now. And this light. Yeah. Um, I've planed it down a bit. But I didn't get it very even. I've got a plane, but the blade is horrible. I either need a new blade or a better way of sharpening it. Um, so... Yeah, it's a bit, uh, it's a bit like a life on the ocean wave, um, but I'll get that sorted. It's now down to the sort of thickness that I need in places. <laughs> but uh, now that I've taken it back to the width of the neck blank, the glue line isn't quite as bad as it was previously. That's the bad side. Yeah, it might not be that bad. Uh, this is the other side. Even that bit wasn't too bad. Oh, and um, I've now sawn the angle on the frading scoop, which I think is probably a mistake if I'm thinking about planing it, because now I'm in danger of chipping the edge, whereas if I'd left it long, done my planing, and then cut it, that might have been a lot more sensible. I don't do this every day of the week. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to get some of the order wrong. I just couldn't resist it. At least I've made a reasonable job of it. Such as it is at the moment. Uh, yeah, but coming on. I don't know how much more I'm going to get done in the next couple of days. But at least the project is progressing and not stalling. That's the important thing. It's so easy for these things to hit a brick wall for one reason or another and if they start to lose momentum too badly yeah, they're in danger of never getting finished. I've got other projects like that uh, but I hope this shouldn't be one of them. <laughs>